Hey, it's Mike Draper with AWC TV, and uh, today we're uh, delighted to have Kurt Kempton uh, on with the show. And uh, he, um, as you know, runs uh, Responsibid and has some really cool things for us. This episode brought to you by windowcleaningresource.com. Kurt, thanks for being on with us. So uh, where are you right now? I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, it looks like you're in uh, information world behind you. Oh yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the world I live in. Yeah, <laughs> just just recently planning out some uh, some new functionality. Okay, very nice. So your software is uh, really grown leaps and bounds. Um, I remember, I think you and I first met in Atlanta at an IWCA convention. That sounds right to me. Yeah, and then I remember uh, sitting with me, you, and uh, Jason um, in Tampa in the restaurant there. We were eating. It was Clearwater at an IWCA convention as well. And we were all had window cleaning companies at the time. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, was it was, Jason Klavansky or was it Jason Evers? No, it was uh, Jason Klavansky. Okay, yeah, Jason. Man. Those uh, like there's like five year run that Jason Klavansky and I made a run. We went, we were both there together. Joined at the hip. He's a really cool guy. Yeah, and I just seen him last year at the uh, IWCA convention too. He was there. And he says, "Hey, you remember me?" Yeah, I do. <laughs> cool guy. So, well, tell me a little bit about what you've been having going on. You um, you sold your window cleaning company. You're out of that business. Yeah. And so that. I had that business for uh, seven years. Started that business from the ground up, and and just as time went on, and people started asking if they could have it, which I look back on those days, you know, with what we had, and I'm I'm shocked anybody would want it, other than the fact that it was the only thing out there of its kind. Um, but like now, I, I recently saw a uh, like a video demonstration that I had, and I was looking at that, and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, as the demand grew for that and I was getting, you know, working on tech support and running and helping systematize other business owners' businesses. And then my business was pretty much running itself with the exception of attention. It was always like, we need to have your attention right now. And happy with how, where I'd grown the company, but I was unhappy with, as I started getting responsive off the ground, it just started getting stagnant. So I built a web page with all of our numbers and, you know, what our sales were and how many texts we had and assets, sheet and everything. I, I built like a really public page and I shared it and I said, you know what, nobody wants to buy a business, you know, this one's for sale. <laughs> and the rest is history. Awesome. Well, yeah, I can remember when you first uh, started with the software and yeah, we, we all, we start somewhere, right? So I, I remember, you know, the, even with window cleaning, I was, a guy was, sharing a story with me of how embarrassed he was with his uh, window cleaning vehicle. And I said, yeah, you know, we ended with like six trucks and they were all nice transits and this and stuff. But when I first started, I started in a Kia Sportage, uh, not the new cool kind either, like the old bubble, you know, it was like a little, and um, I had a Tucker tank strapped to the back seat and you could put a, a bungee cord around the headrest and it, the Tucker uh, DI thing would sit there. And the old aluminum tucker pole would sit down right on the chair. So it was logo, though. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it's Josh Latimer that always says, don't despise small beginnings. Um, I guess his mom always said that to him. And you know what? It's true. Like, we all have to start somewhere. Uh, it, it's just when you look back and you're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that. And, and so now, obviously, in response to it's grown, you know, I'm really proud of what we built and where we're going and, you know, amazing to think that, you know, when I was first building it, like, I think the first $100,000 I built on the so put into the software, I ended up having to throw it away anyway. Um, and I, I think that's just going to be the life of a software company that just, as the internet changes, as web technologies change and all that, like, that, that just works that way. But when you're first getting started and you think you know what you're doing and you're actually uh, only partial to the business, business owner side, you don't really know the tech side. I think that's you're in a bigger trap, but um, yeah, hitting the delete key on a thousand or a hundred thousand dollars really, that was that was pretty nerve wracking. Yeah, well, we all have in one way or another. Even as uh, uh, actual business owners of a window cleaning company, you 
you know, you have this big learning curve and if you could have all that money back, you'd be in a different place. <laughs> but, uh, so where are you going now? I mean, you've, you've been around the window cleaning industry forever. I've seen you at a couple carpet cleaning shows and janitorial shows. Um, so how big has it got? So we've got outside window cleaning and pressure washing to, like you said, carpet cleaning and janitorial, but also maid service. Uh, right now I'm working with a handyman company, uh, Philadelphia. Pretty good sized company too, and, and we're building about 15 modules there for different different types of things. Um, typically in a locksmith, we're working with locksmiths right now. Basically as people come to us and they see the automation of the follow-up and the probation and the sales, not marketing. I'm not talking about marketing right now. I'm just talking about system process. Um, what we're doing is just as someone comes up to us and says, hey, we want to get going with your software, uh, we'll partner with them and start building modules for that particular industry based off of an expert knowledge. And I think that's where response has been really as strong is that it's always been one of those things where most software is built by developers for service companies. And that's kind of a treacherous mix if you think about it because you know, oftentimes we get about half or three quarters or there's just like really painful percentage that we don't get. Um, so as we've teamed with these experts, we, we've tried to kind of stay true to our DNA as far as building a tool for people by the same people <laughs> that it's for. Yeah. So if uh, there were probably got some uh, folks that follow us on this that maybe don't even know what you do. Give, give me a little snapshot from 10,000 feet. Sure. Responsible is a, it's a way to be able to take, for example, specifications about a job. Like this job has this many windows or this types of windows or, you know, window tinting, the measurements of the windows or deck cleaning, you know, a deck this big made out of this type of wood that's got stain or it's not, you know, it's painted or it's composite or what's that. So you just fill out a few questions about it and then it converts it to pricing and, and our you can convert to pricing numerous ways. Um, most people are familiar with, you know, going into QuickBooks and building up an estimate and just putting them up. The problem with that is that a line item bid typically leads to an ultimatum or bartering. So, you know, I, I add a few lines, I come up with a total. And at that point, you either accept my price or you don't. And if you accept my price, that's that's wonderful. I don't know if I could have upsold you more. Responsibility really focuses on that sales system of constantly trying to upsell more, let the customer know more about what you do in a really unintrusive. And then if they don't like the price, then one of two things happens. They feel like it's an ultimatum and they just say no. And they, they'll look at one of those line items. And you know, for us, it used to be like um, screen cleaning, for example. People would say, hey, if you'll throw the screens in and, um, you know, and deduct that off the price, I'll do business with you. And what we found is, is that if you just say, here's the package where we do the glass, and here's the package where we do the glass screens, tracks, and we walk, do a house wash. Is that people will not start to barter with you and sell themselves based on their needs and their budget, and your ticket price will, will go up. When you combine that with the automation of like follow-up email, email drops, um, when you when you do all of that, every customer gets treated like your ultimate customer, like you're following up with them perfectly every single time, tracking where your leads are coming from and the value of, you know are and how often they close and things like that. Responsible will start to kind of teach you what you need, either different lead sources that you should or shouldn't be using or how to um, improve your sales from there. But it's really just about making it so technical side of the website if they want for a customer to interact that way. Or you can make it so a salesperson over the phone or a sales, for example, to go give a quote. Everybody's kind of qualified to give a quote. And when they do build the quote, it'll automatically get followed by a really powerful proposal presentation yeah so it's really a way for person that lands on your site to kind of unintrusively get more information figure out a pricing structure and the software does such a nice job it places them or gives them some options and upsells to basically lay out a ABC pricing and basically does the sales for you Stay tuned for our next episode of AWC TV by following us on YouTube, Facebook, or our website, awcmag.com.